working. Thank you, Vataji. Are both working here now? Can I start? Are both working? Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Then do it. Yes, you go back. Okay. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyana Jivishalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Hare Krishna so today we'll speak on the top. I'll discuss on the topic of the six limbs of surrender, and I'll focus primarily on the first limb today. The first limb is of anukulya sankalpa. So I'll go over this concept of surrender gradually. <clears throat> if we consider the six limbs, these are explained by our acharyas. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has elaborated on them, and Bhaktivinoda he has also made a series of songs called Sharanagati, which uh, describe this theme of surrender in various ways. So, Anukulya se sankalpa pratikulya se varjanam prakshishti iti vishwaso goktratve varanam tatha atmanikshe pakarpanye shadavidha sharanagati So, it said over here that there are six limbs of surrender. Anukulya si sankalpa, except that which is favorable. Pratikulya si varjanam, uh, put aside that which is unfavorable. So here I will do, there will be some metaphors I will use throughout to illustrate this principle of surrender. The one main metaphor which I'll be using is of treatment, of uh, medication. And then I'll use some other treatments also, metaphors also, such as war at some times. But let's focus on this treatment of metaphor of medication. So if somebody is sick and they are to be treated, about 15, 17 years ago, I was very sick and I had TB. So there's a devoted doctor who was treating me. Uh, and he told me that if you, it was quite a serious uh, advanced TB I had, so he told me that in today you will have to practice Bhagavad Gita with me if you want to be become healthy. Said, what do you mean? He said you will have to follow Sarva Dharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam He says you will have to you know give up all your conceptions of what austerities you want to perform or what else you want to do, and just do what I am telling you to do. And then he told me various things about what food to eat, how much rest to take and everything. So that time it struck me how this particular principle applies. Just that when we go to a doctor, we basically surrender. We may have a particular plan of how we want to lead our life. It may be based on our desires, which might be lower. I want to eat this or I want to eat that. Or it might be based on our certain plans and purposes also. But if the doctor tells us something differently, then we have to follow because that's what is required for the recovery of health. Of course, here we are assuming that the doctor is competent. So, Sarva Dharman Parityajya, as Krishna says, just give up everything else. Maam Ekam Sharanam So, now if you consider the metaphor of a doctor, 
generally we may think of surrender as as say a, a general who is defeat in a military context in a devotional context we all have certain stereotypes of surrender in a devotional context the stereotype usually is that we surrender by uh, we surrender by giving in to worldly uh, we accept defeat basically in, in military terms that so uh, the a particular army that has been defeated it raises the white flag of surrender and then it comes back that it accepts defeat so surrender is having that negative association of powerlessness helplessness defeat that's the that's the military context of surrender say after fighting the world war to germany surrendered eventually now it could have another connotation in the devotional context we may think of dropadi as surrendering surrendering as calling out to the lord helplessly raising her hands in total dependence so here there is not so much a matter of defeat as a matter of dependence so defeat has a negative connotation dependence has a positive connotation but still dependence both of them convey the idea of powerlessness that okay we can't do anything so let us surrender but these six limbs of surrender begin with with a very uh with a connotation with with a delineation of some things which we have to do which implies that we do have some power so anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam that means accept that which is favorable avoid that which is unfavorable so this for understanding this how does this kind of choosing carefully come under surrender surrender simply means okay just give up but no here it is said choose carefully and that is surrender so that means the point is that if if somebody is taking going to take a treatment then whatever is conducive for health they accept that whatever is unfavorable for health they avoid that now of course we could say that is something which we should always do but often in the routine course of our life our health may not be our topmost priority yes health is there but we have our job we have our family we have our spiritual practices we have our services and sometimes if health is stressed that's okay but if you are focusing on uh, recovering of health then we will operate on this on this dynamic so accept what is favorable so okay eating this kind of food is favorable take food which are say having uh, if i had tb take a food with a lot of proteins in it particularly as a virgin avoid certain kinds of foods or uh, don't do certain kinds of activities so if we consider surrender to be like a treatment now in the treatment if we consider uh, who does the major work is it the doctor or is it the patient if it's something like a surgery at that time the patient just uh, is given some anesthesia and patient lies on bed and the surgeon does most of the work but if it is involving something like physiotherapy or something which involves exercise and long term treatment then in the in that situation the doctor's role is is very significant but the active things that the doctor does may be very minimum that means we just even if somebody is say on a sometime i had to take like a 9 month treatment but in the 9 months i just went to the doctor maybe four or five times three times maybe after i was discharged and so literally the doctor did nothing except maybe see me do some tests and write down some prescriptions that's all so most of the things have to be done by the patient and yet it is the patient who is surrendered to the doctor so a patient is a patient is obeying the doctor that means you could say the patient is doing what the doctor is telling but in this conception of surrender there is a lot to be done by the patient so in our spiritual life also especially in the six limbs of surrender there are these two things which are very, two things which are very active accept that which is favorable and avoid that which is unfavorable 
and so we could say that doing this is surrender so surrender in this sense is very is not just uh, uh, passive dependence it is resourceful choosing it is active resourceful choosing so we will have to constantly think okay is this favorable is this not favorable and based on such resourceful choosing we move forward in surrender so the patient has to live the life uh, for treating him oneself it is not that the doctor will live for the patient so similarly when we surrender it is not that krishna does everything for us it is we who have to do according to krishna's will now anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam is to are there so doctors may give prescriptions and proscriptions that they do this and don't do that prescribe and proscribe so that that is prescribed that is favorable do that that is proscribed that is unfavorable avoid that and after that anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam pratishyati vishwaso गोपतृत्वे वर्णन तथा रक्षिष्यति इति विश्वासो रक्षिष्य इति दैट आई विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड दिस फेथ इज रिक्वायर्ड ऑफ दैट कृष्णा इज माय प्रोटेक्टर सो नॉर्मली व्हेन एवर वी सरेंडर लेट्स गो बैक टू द टू मेटाफर्स वंस अगेन से द वॉर मेटाफर एंड द मेडिसिन मेटाफर in a war metaphor also when an army surrenders to the other army they have at least some faith some hope that this uh, person to whom i am surrendering they are not just brutal and they won't just exploit or kill me mm, or uh, that there will be some kind of fairness in the terms of the treaty that will come if we surrender but in the military sense surrender is the is the last option usually people surrender only when uh, they have no power to fight and they have no hope of winning that means either it is slaughter or surrender we keep fighting and we are slaughtered or we surrender so that connotation slaughter or surrender is quite negative again so that's not the connotation we would apply but the point i'm making is if somebody is going to prefer surrender to slaughter that means they have the faith that after surrender we won't be slaughtered that surrender after surrender the the person who we are surrendering to the for force we are surrendering to at least they will treat with a uh, treat uh, treat us with some degree of fairness so faith is required now if you going to go to a doctor rakshishri iti vishwaso what that would mean is that we have faith this doctor is competent enough to cure me that his doctor knows their business and knows what they're talking about and they will they will their treatment will work in modern medical science although it is very biology based that means it's by bi- it's biology ke biochemistry based this is the imbalance in the body and this is the uh, chemical to treat it or it may be the surgery involved and also it's like anatomy anatomy of physiology both are parts of biology only so it is we may say there is no need for faith over there you just take the pill you get cured but even to make the decision to take the pill one has to have faith that the pill will work the doctor knows the right pill to prescribe and therefore if i take this pill i'll be cured beyond that and there is a this no faith is required in every walk of life there in medicine there is a well known phenomena of placebo effects that even if the doctor gives sugar pills but the patient will use that actually i am getting medication many times the patients get cured so for medicines to pass the desired to to be passed by the government authorities as a uh, working medicines the rate of cure by the medicines by the proposed medicines that might be coming up after research the rate of uh, that medicine should be rate of that medicine working needs to be significantly more than the rate of uh, 
cure because of placebos. So if the patient's faith that I am I'm being treated competently, that itself has a healing effect. Now, placebos can't cure everything. But the point is, faith is not just uh, that the doctor is that, okay, this medicine is going to work. But faith is also that I am in safe hands. And even if the medicine is not going to work, still that faith itself works. So now, when we are talking about surrender within bhakti, surrender is based on, and here the point is not just in, in military terms, the purpose of surrender is uh, to at least get not a terrible deal, to get a good deal, hopefully. In, in medicine, the purpose of surrender is to get good health. In bhakti, we want to surrender to develop a personal relationship with Krishna. So, <clears throat> normally, if we consider both the military surrender and the uh, medical surrender, they are basically motivated by fear. Fear that if I don't do, things will be worse. Now, that might also be one way in which we surrender to Krishna. But the way the Bhagavad Gita talks about surrender, Say Arjuna is told to surrender. That is, Krishna expresses his love for him. And he says, you are very dear to me. Manmana bhavmad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maam evaishya satyam te pratijane priyosi me. Pratijane priyosi me. I declare that you are very dear to me, Arjuna. And therefore, I ask you to surrender. So if you surrender, I will protect you. Sarvadharman parityajya mame kam sharanam raja aham tvam sarvapape bhyo moksha ishami maasha chaha moksha ishami I will free you from all sinful reactions. You do not fear. So Krishna is revealing his love to Arjuna and is, the surrender is a, basically in that context a call to return the love of Krishna it's not so much a call to it's not so much a call to uh, surrender out of fear as surrender out of love so when we understand this that it is for the purpose of love so rakshashiti yes there is danger and you want to protect her from the danger but as a devotee's conception evolves initially we might Practice bhakti because we are in trouble. We might surrender to Krishna when we are in trouble. And that's good. At least then we turn toward Krishna. But that is not enough. Uh, we need, we want, Krishna doesn't want uh, surrender uh, like a uh, like a forced marriage. It's called shotgun marriage. So the bride, the bride catches the bridegroom catches the bride and forces her to with a gun to her, you marry me. It's not like that. So Krishna wants it out of love, and that's why we see that. So in the third canto, there's a description of how the gopa of how the uh, child surrenders to. Uh, uh, child prays fervently to Krishna and on praying fervently to Krishna the child uh, he says please I don't want to go out into this world let me stay here and let me become enlightened and what happens is Krishna says uh, now we might say that he prays the world is full of, full of illusion let me not go there but still the child goes out of the womb into the world and more often than not, the child falls into illusion. So why is that? Is it that Krishna does not hear the prayer of the child? No. Krishna wants the child to go into the world and freely surrender. Not surrender out of force. In the womb, when the, when the distress becomes unbearable and there is some kind of sensation of the Lord's presence or an awareness of a divine connection with the Lord, there is some a prayer and surrender. 
so we want protection not just from the distress of the world but we want protection from the delusions of the world also and what is the fundamental delusion takshishiti vishwaso goptritve varanam tatha that my dear lord we may have doubts if i surrender will krishna protect me then if our conception arises rises then we will understand that actually krishna is always protecting me even now my existence is dependent on factors beyond me that right now we are breathing the we are breathing and we are not produce the air that we are breathing we may say okay i worked hard and produce the food but no we didn't we only procured the food we worked hard the food was provided by nature even if scientists in produce in future start making artificial food but still the ingredients come from nature so even after we eat the food if we don't digest it how our body has the complex mechanism to digest we don't know so we only think of we think of our digestion only when it doesn't work only when it stops working we don't think about it we just presume it will get digested so the point is goptritve varananda tad that krishna is my maintainer that it is not that oh if i do this will krishna protect me even without doing this krishna is protecting me already yes there is this particular danger but that danger is there because i am alive and if i am alive that is because of many factors beyond me now it said that there may be many things wrong in our life but if we are alive then that means there's more right than wrong in our life whatever be our age we might be we might be 35 40 25 60 there are so many people who die before they come to the age we are at and if we are alive that means it's because of factors beyond us that those factors have worked favorably enough to keep us alive so we are right now also dependent on krishna so goptritve varanam tatha that krishna is my protector that is rakshishiti krishna is a competent protector but krishna is also a competent maintainer and he we may say there are many things wrong in our life oh but it didn't work out that didn't work out yes but if we are alive there are a significant number of things that have worked out then atmanikshe pakar panye so uh, so now we know those four levels at which surrender is uh, or uh, we approach god that is fear desire duty and love uh, at the level of fear oh if i don't obey god things will become worse he will punish me at the level of desire oh if i obey god he will reward me things will become better duty is where we understand that actually god has already done so much for me it's like a, the parents have already done so much for me and the chi- child this was grown up adult understands what all the parents have done for me and therefore there is a sense of duty so we could say that fear and desire are more self centered duty is where the consciousness is more ex- expanding more and more and love is where it's based on a personal relationship with krishna the brajavasis their surrender to krishna is based on their love for krishna that they they just give themselves to krishna all the time and that is atmanikshepa karpanye so atmanikshep is giving oneself utterly to krishna atmanikshep atma is self nikshep so bali maharaj when he gave his all his possessions to krishna and then he gave himself to krishna ah so now what is this giving of oneself to krishna that is actually based on love when we may surrender when we may surrender to a doctor yes we entrust our body but it's not that we are going to uh, we are going to give our heart to the doctor okay we may give a part of our heart in the sense that we may be very deeply grateful to the doctor if we Uh, if he survive and heal but the doctor is not the object of love for the patient and similarly when an army surrenders 
the conquering army is definitely not the object of love and if even if somebody gives oneself say the defending soldier surrender gives up uh, oneself then that's slavery that's not love but here atmanik shape that is giving of oneself to krishna that is based on love so we are talking about bhakti bhakti is divine love or devotional service as prabhupada translated so we give ourselves to krishna and here we the idea is that we understand that love is consuming bhakti consumes our entire being it is not just uh, one part of my life which is wrong and i pray to krishna during one part of my life to set that one part of life which is wrong right rather uh, we understand that my life is a part of my bhakti that means this life and whatever bhakti i am practicing it is actually a part of uh, my multi life spiritual evolution and if i can practice seriously it may get completed in this life if not it may take one more life doesn't matter but so it's not that bhakti is a part of life functionally that is true we have many other aspects to our life and the direct bhakti activities that we do are a part of our life that's functionally true but philosophically it is not that bhakti is a part of life life is a part of bhakti it's a part of my multi life your growth in bhakti so i want to also the purpose and perfection of bhakti is we want to offer our entire being to krishna and karpanye karpanye it's you know we say say this is a variant but not exactly the same we have uh, karpanye is humility so now krupana the word has negative connotation krupana is is a miser so krupana means that one who holds everything for oneself for immediate possession without even the consideration of pleasure so those who are misers they hold on to things without considering how they can be useful they can be constructively used they have wealth but they don't even use that wealth for their own uh, well being they just hold on to wealth so that is karpanye uh, so that is krupana but karpanye has a very different connotation we have karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichhami tvam dharma sammudha chetaha ishreyasyan nishitam brohitan me shishyaste ham shaadi mam tvam prapannam shishyaste ham shaadi mam tvam prapannam so karpanye here is an acknowledgement that krishna i am weak without you so it's not just i am weak i am weak is important but i am weak without you and with you i am strong without krishna we with krishna we flourish without krishna we languish and perish the soul is like a is a part of the whole just like if you have a complex machine and we have one screw out of it now that screw falls off it doesn't really have much value but if you have a complicated machine say like a mac computer or a high end computer and there's a screw which holds its bottom frame together if the screw falls off that screw we will go every where did the screw fall off we'll search far and wide we may have to order that screw specially that screw is playing a very special role but if somebody if that if that screw somebody sees it on the ground and they don't know it's a part of this whole and screw might lie down for some time and then it will be uh, swept away into the uh, into the trash so similarly for us when the soul is disconnected from krishna it is like a screw lying on the ground unless someone knows the value of that screw and connects it with the hole that is the unless connects with the computer it will eventually be swept away so we are like those parts so we may we may do our best to create a meaningful life for ourselves but time will sweep everything away so time will sweep even us away so karpanye is humility and humility doesn't mean that we think we are worthless it is we are worthless without krishna 
and with krishna our existence has has worth it has significance in fact everything that we do becomes worthwhile when we are living connect with krishna and we are striving to connect with him so surrender means that a devotee recognizes that without krishna i am worthless and with krishna everything will become worthwhile and therefore let me connect with him so when we try to when we have this understanding so going back to the medical metaphor if we continue that it's like say somebody has gone to a doctor will this doctor's medicine work but if the doctors are regular physician and we are already following the doctor's guidelines and so my current health which was there my regular health which was there before this disease came upon me that health is also to some extent the credit of the doctor so we expand the scope of the relationship not just this treatment but oh my rakshish goptritve varnata tha goptritve that my my health is being maintained also by this doctor and atmani kshepa karpanne that okay this treatment requires me to give myself fully <clears throat> i was recently with radhanath maharaj in chicago and ambarish prabhu was also there so ambarish prabhu is have um, he is going to come to govardhan eco village for treatment now ambarish prabhu is very dedicated to the uh, toivp project and he is he travels across the world despite of his health being deteriorating to uh um, to raise support for the project so he said i'll come to gev i'll be there for uh, i will be there for 6 weeks but in between i'll have to go to singapore malaysia and other places so then then uh, the, they said that korang pur adesh amradhan maj both were there both of them said that the doctor in gev he is a he's a big big doctor who comes from elsewhere only once a month and he treats and we will arrange for him to come when you are there but his condition for treating is that uh, during the phase of treatment you don't go anywhere just take full rest so you have to give your full being atmanik shape so we see that krishna also requires our full being now of course with the doctor we give the full being for a short while krishna it's forever you want our full being but the point is atmanik shape is required at that time at least that's why sometimes when the sickness is very high the doctors say you cannot just do treatment at your home you have to get admitted over here that means we give our our full physical time or physically at least we are present for constant observation and medication and karpanye karpanye is in this case at least that without just like most people they take treatment uh, not when it is preventive it is when you cannot live without the cure so without now that can be based on either the experience of pain or discomfort is becoming so unbearable i can't live with this i have to take this treatment or it can be based in knowledge okay i have got this maybe i got this particular disease and it's going to worsen so before it worsens let me take the treatment that medical metaphor can be extended like that over here also but the important thing is more than the Uh, the medical metaphor has its utility to understand the dynamics involved in surrender surrender is not just passive as yes, there are moments in extreme distress and we may right, raise our hands in surrender but when these six limbs of surrender are talked about they are not talking about just those moments of extreme danger or helplessness when we raise our hands in surrender here what is being talked about is uh the overall mode of living which comprises a surrendered life and therefore we understand without a connection with krishna my life is worthless even if things are going on right in my life right now you know there's no major problem my health is good my family is good my job is good my prospects are bright but still it's karpanye actually all of these are like kamala dala jal jeevan tal mala bhajo hari pad ni tere this everything may be wonderful at this moment but at next moment everything can collapse that is the nature of time not that we have to live in fear but that we have to live with knowledge and with that knowledge we focus on connecting with krishna even if 
things are right because we understand uh, right now circumstantially the things that i may do i am doing may have value but ultimately without krishna nothing has value so karpanye we offer ourselves fully to krishna in that mood of surrender and then we can grow in our life so in the future sessions we can grow in our life toward krishna so in my, in the next sessions i talk about the limbs individually what does it mean anukulya sankalpa pratikulya savarjanam and how we can apply them in the practicalities of our life but in this session i focus on the theme of the the practical application in terms of how we can see this as a medical metaphor so i'll summarize i spoke on sir sir it's understanding surrender through a medical metaphor primarily so in the six limbs of surrender that i talked about they begin with active choices not just as passive dependence except what is favorable and avoid that which is unfavorable that means except uh, it's like a patient goes to a doctor and the doctor a patient surrenders to the doctor but most of the work unless it's a surgery most of the work has to be done by the patient work here means choices have to be done by the patient and those choices mean accept the prescriptions and avoid the proscriptions so that's anukulya sankalpa pratikulya savarjanam like so acceptance and rejections rejection this is uh, the first two elements and to be able to do these two elements the, uh, the first two are basically choices actions the next four are dispositions that we need to have so that we can do these two actions and that is rakshashiti iti vishwas so that the patient needs to have the understanding the faith that the doctor will cure me so faith is required in medicine also in the doctor sometimes faith can work even when the medicine doesn't work it's like placebos so if the faith is required even in a medical cure then how much more in a spiritual cure where it's a matter of the purpose of faith is not just a biochemical restoration of balance but it is a spiritual connection with a uh, with the supreme object of love krishna so we may um, when we are surrendering to krishna we need that faith that krishna will protect me and i talked also about that at the metaphor of a war the negative connotation of the word surrender is associated because a defeated army sees surrender as preferable to slaughter so there is nothing else we can do so we surrender but even then it is prefer surrender to slaughter only if they have faith that this this army won't slaughter us after that or torture us so that faith is required either way but for a devotee when we are approaching krishna it is not so much out of fear as out of love fear might be an initial impetus but krishna wants us to choose him free freely out of love and that's why the embryo in the womb who surrenders krishna accepts the surrender but then krishna also gives the facility for living in the world so that they can the the child can the person can surrender even when they don't need to surrender when they have alternatives then if if we have no alternatives and we surrender then that's not love that's compulsion but when there there are alternatives and still we surrender that's actually shows choice born of love and how can we make that choice how can we have that faith that surrendering to krishna is good we understand that it is krishna who is my maintainer go through three varnam tatha and even when i am living normally my normal life depends on so many things beyond me and all those are being provided by krishna not by just not just by my own arrangement we don't produce the air we breathe we don't produce the food we eat and we don't digest that food also then atmanikshepa karpanni so i talk about when we come to gopthrutve it's like we move from to this from desire to duty the four levels fear desire duty and love if you understand that it is god who is taking care of me even now my parents have done so much for me that i am i have duty to serve him and then we move from duty towards love that's why here it's a complete offering of oneself which is not done in the case of a okay so physical war surrender or a medical surrender or temporarily it might have to be done we offer us as physically but here body mind heart everything is to be offered atmanik shape and we do that because we understand krishna is 
so attractive and loving krishna is is the purpose of my life and without you then we talked about karpanya is is krupana is one who holds on to things that are worthless uh, or who doesn't tap the worth of things and holds on to them in a way that turns out to be worthless so karpanya is in this context that i am worthless if i am without krishna it's like a screw which is a part of a of a of a expensive computer and then they have as little as huge value in its place but meager value without out of its place similarly we will connect with krishna our life and everything that we do gains a value and to the extent we understand that and surrender to him to that extent our life can move forward and we can evolve through everything that happens so we understand that bhakti may be functionally be a part of life but philosophically it is life that is a part of bhakti and in in this life in future lives in, in every life death will be the ultimate destroyer of meaning but devotion is the provider of meaning that transcends death thank you very much hare krishna so any questions or comments beautiful question good question so if surrender the perfect surrender is out of love then gajendra dropadi and bali maharaj whom we consider as <coughs> emblems of surrender none of them did out of love they all did out of situation yes <coughs> i don't see anywhere where gajendra is considered to be like the perfection of surrender they did surrender and he is usually given the example of artho among the four categories of people who are who come to krishna among the distressed gajendra is giving us the example and it is good that one comes to krishna some way or the other so krishna said they are sukrutinaha they are all very good people because they are coming to me so yes when we have difficulties also we can do so many other things some people can get just drunk and forget all the problems some people can even come as suicide and just uh end thing that that's the end of everything so to come to krishna even when one is helpless requires a certain level of piety and that is also to be appreciated mm, so so hindi could say that gajendra is the example of surrender for the sadhakas that even in distress come to him and of course we know gajendra had a past life and that uh, his surrender was not just because of the situation it is also because that situation provoked the recollection of his past life when he had been king in the vyumna and he surrendered at that time so the story of gajendra if you look at the context is not primarily to demonstrate surrender it's primarily to demonstrate multiple things it's how when the most comfortable situation suddenly danger can come up and more importantly if you look at the eighth chapter and its context it is ஜாபரம்ஜாப்பியம் 
a significant element of the story, but that's not the primary. Demonstrating surrender is not the primary purpose of the story. So now, if you consider Bali Maharaj, it was, in a sense, he had already been imprisoned. So he had given his kingdom. He had been tied up by because he had not been able to apparently he had not been able to uh, fulfill the word of of giving three steps of land. He had already been imprisoned, and that time when he offers a third step, as his, he bows down on his head. So there, what is he doing? It is he is ex basically for him also. It's a dramatic tilt. The initial part of the story. It's all Bali Maharaj is saying that I am honorable Kshatriya, and I will always, if I have given the word of giving charity, I will surely give charity uh, to a Brahmana, and that's why he even rejects when he rejects Shukracharya. That's not so much because he, Vishnu is Vishnu is the supreme lord, and I am his devotee, and I am going to surrender to him. At least that's not how it comes out in the Bhagavatam. It's he says I am I am going to honor my word even at the cost of death. But then Prahlad Maharaj comes and offers prayers. Brahma Ji comes and offers prayers, and later on, once he is bound, at that time, it is Bali Maharaj also starts speaking with great devotion. He says that, "My dear Lord, nobody can punish the way you have punished, and yet nobody can, nobody is as great a well wisher as you are. So I offer, I will honor my word and offer my help to you. So it's if we consider thereafter that that." It is started with the situation, but there's a complete transformation in his disposition. And the Acharya explained that it was the prayers and blessings of Prahlad Maharaj that worked on Bali Maharaj in that particular situation. And his devotion was so great that afterwards Vamana became his doorkeeper. And the mood of becoming the doorkeeper is that. I stole everything from you, but now I will ensure that no one steals anything from you. That's how I'll become your doorkeeper. So, so in that case, that surrender expressed his devotion, and although it might have manifested because of the situation, but as I said, uh, uh, in the case of Gajendra, he was liberated. In the case of, in the case of. Bali Maharaj, it was more than liberation. He got a personal connection with the Lord uh, and a personal really a proximity to the Lord. Now, in the case of Draupadi, it was her whole life was devoted to Krishna, and at that particular time she called out to Krishna. But before that, also she was devoted. After that, also she was devoted. That is just a dramatic high point. It is not that before that she was a non-devotee and after that she becomes a devotee. That's how it is in the other cases. Uh, at least in the way they are manifesting in this lifetime. But in the case of Draupadi, we could say she's always devoted. But in that particular time, it's a dramatic demonstration of devotional surrender. So here, it is, Vishwanath Chakra will explain that. Rupa Goswami also says the similar thing uh, that even sometimes devotees, when they are in great danger, uh, they may seek protection from Krishna. And they may express surrender, but they have anya. They still have anya bilashita shunya. There's anya bilasha and anya bilashita. Anya bilasha is other desires. Anya bilashita is the inclination for desires for anything other than Krishna. So, in emergency, a devotee may pray to Krishna for something, but a devotee doesn't make it a habit of praying to Krishna for things in the world. Uh, even things such as one's own body's protection. A devotee's relationship with Krishna is primarily based on serving and offering of oneself. But occasionally a devotee may seek protection so that one can continue one's service to the Lord. So then in that case, the surrender is just a high point of the relationship. Of the high point, it's a high point where devotion is demonstrated. It's just like say in an ordinary life also, a mother may love her child very much, and she does all duties every day, taking care of the child and everything. But when say, the child is sick and the mother stays awake all night by the child, or the child in the hospital and the mother is there constantly praying and being there doing everything, 
So it's extraordinary moments that uh, that love is demonstrated in extraordinary ways. So in the case of Draupadi, the devotion was always there, but in that moment, the devotion was demonstrated in a dramatic way. So basically, for all of us, these high points of extreme difficulty when the devotee surrendered to Krishna, they are meant to demonstrate how we also need to surrender. But it's not just that we surrender at those times, just as all these characters, either before and after, or at least after, they devoted themselves to Krishna. So similarly, we are also meant to uh, take inspiration from these visible symbols and the, or that these dramatic examples of surrender at particular situations. And then we apply that principle of surrender throughout our life. Does that answer your question? Is there one more question? We'll stop. Thank you, Nandavan. Happy to be of service, Mataji. Okay. I'll be, yes, the next three days I'm here, I'll be giving the class. I think there's a question here asked on the chat. Is there, does anyone else have a question or should I answer this? Is Kusum Gupta Mataji is asking a question. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So, what is the difference? Sorry, should I answer this question on the chat? What is the difference between Atma Nivedanam and Surrender? Well, there are different frames of analyzing. Atma Nivedanam is the offering of one's being. In this frame of analyzing, uh, Atma Nivedanam is one limb of surrender. Because yes, we offer ourselves to Krishna. That is definitely there. You could say that is... Uh, okay, tomorrow I'll be talking more about this. That I, I indicated that there are there are actions and there are dispositions. So I might say that I have offered myself um, to you. Now, you might say in a relationship, a patriot may say I offered myself to the country. But then that, that is internal. How do we know that that is there actually? That has to be seen through actions. So our actions deepen the dispositions and the deep dispositions uh, reinforce the actions. So if somebody has a patriotism in their heart. And then there is actual service to the nation. Maybe they serve the poor, they guard the war, they, they fight for the country or they support those who are fighting for the country, whatever. So there is internal and there is external. So Anukulyasa Sankalpa Patikulyasa Sankalpa that is most, more external expression of the inner surrender. So Atmanikya, that I want to offer my entire being to Krishna, that is the inner disposition. And that is one limb of surrender. So, thank you very much. We'll continue tomorrow. And if there are any more questions, we can discuss them tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaurabhatta Pinda ki jai. Gaurapremanan. Sendavat Hare Krishna.